Hi everyone, it's Athena here. The video today is going to be the second video I do on avoidant personality. The reason for this being that I noticed how popular the first video was that I did on this topic. You've had a lot of um, questions about avoidant personality, how it develops, why it develops. Um, you've sent me a lot of emails about it saying that maybe you have it. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm not a psychotherapist, I'm not a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, so if you want a formal diagnosis of it, then I suggest that you go to a qualified person. However, the videos that I generally do on these topics are just to give you information and to maybe help you in figuring out why it is that maybe you feel um, uncomfortable or shy or have a very low self-esteem in certain situations. It might be that you generally have an avoidant style, but it might not be that you have full-blown avoidant personality disorder. Now, the reason that people have avoidance is because they had to do this in their childhood. It was probably something that they did in order to cope. So avoidance became a coping mechanism when they were a lot younger. So, of course, if you think about it, when you avoid something you fear, the more you avoid that fear, the bigger the fear gets. So the more you avoid it, the bigger the fear gets, and then it goes round and round in a vicious circle, and it gets bigger and bigger, and it's a very hard thing to treat. And the hard thing about avoidance is that the things that you avoid usually stem from a very deep um, feeling that you're not as good as everybody else. So you're too scared, for instance, to put your hand up in class when you're at uni or when you're in school. You don't want to draw any attention to yourself because you're so petrified of being ridiculed or laughed at. You have this deep feeling of not being as good as everybody else, that there's something deeply wrong with you. And it's not just shyness, it goes beyond shyness. It is a really intense feeling of shame and um, low self-worth. It's very difficult for somebody with avoidant traits to feel the fear and do it anyway. And it also means that it's very difficult for them to take any challenges on in life. And if somebody doesn't believe in themselves, then it makes them very vulnerable in relationships with other people because they're constantly shying away, because they're they're constantly scared of getting too close in case that person that they are you know, getting to know ends up saying something rejecting or hurtful. And the main reason for avoidant personality, although it hasn't been studied extensively, the main reason that um, avoidant personality develops is through childhood emotional neglect. Because when a parent fails to respond to a child's emotional needs, the child then learns to avoid feeling, to avoid expressing any of their feelings, and to avoid needing the parent. They are basically taught to avoid everything that makes them human and that makes them real and that makes them valid. And when you're not able to express your emotions, express your feelings, and when a parent isn't able to be attentive enough, then the child grows up feeling um, shame and low self-worth and develops avoidance in most situations. And they feel invisible. And when they feel invisible, then they just kind of fall into this pattern of acting in an invisible way. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be heard. They don't want to take part in um, social activities that may put the spotlight on them. They hate the spotlight. They just constantly want to stay out of the spotlight. Now, if you think you may have avoidant traits, it's probably a good idea that you ask yourself a couple of questions. So as a child, Maybe you would ask yourself, what did I avoid in my childhood home? What did I avoid mostly growing up? Because that will help you understand a little bit more about yourself. Was it that you were scared of certain people? Or was it that when you expressed a feeling or emotion, you got punished for it? What was it? You have to think about this a little bit. Secondly, it's important that you accept that avoidance is a coping mechanism but that it is possible to replace this coping mechanism with a better, healthier coping skill. It doesn't mean that avoidance is always going to be a part of your life. It may be that you avoid some situations, but it may be that you can work on others um, and find healthier ways to cope. 
you have to be um, observant of yourself and very introspective and look at maybe the way you behave or notice the feelings that come up in certain situations, things that might make you uncomfortable and record every incident that you notice yourself getting uncomfortable and see if there's a pattern developing. Is there maybe a pattern, for example, that you always avoid taking part in group activities or games? Is there a pattern in you being a bit of a committophobe? So for instance, do you um, get to know somebody and then the minute you start getting too close, you withdraw? You're so scared of being transparent to your potential partner that you withdraw from the relationship when things start getting more intimate. And then that person is left wondering what the hell they did and why. Um, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of examples, but just really notice that about yourself and um, try and write a list of all the things that you observe. And if you are in therapy, then of course, this is something you can work on with your therapist. They will challenge you to take baby steps in doing things that you maybe are scared of or maybe would rather avoid. So exposure therapy is very good. Cognitive behavioral therapy is very good. And sometimes in combination with antidepressants. And, you know, the reality is that the more you face things, then the less scary they become. And it might not be that you're able to face everything. If you do have the personality disorder, you've got to be aware that this is chronic. But you can make it easier for yourself by taking baby steps and um, trying to take on small challenges that you think you are more likely to succeed in. Another thing about avoidant personality disorder is that the people that develop it probably grew up in a home where their parents were extremely critical and extremely rejecting. The child then is left feeling like they can't bond. They yearn for this closeness and this bond, but they aren't able to form or maintain this bond because in their childhood they didn't learn how to do this. And of course, this leads to extremely strong feelings of inadequacy. And this isn't just the typical um, shyness or social awkwardness. It is extremely pervasive. And these people end up having an intense fear of rejection and criticism. And they will most likely stay away from people so they don't have to feel this, this extremely painful rejection rather than bond with people. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was as helpful as the first one. I think there's a lot of people out there who do suffer with avoidant traits. Even if you don't have the full-blown personality disorder, it might just be that you're somebody who is very much affected by this and you feel that you don't have the confidence to do things in your life that you wish you could do or that you don't have the confidence in your life to um, form close relationships with others because you're so scared of the criticism or the possible rejection that may come with that. So I wish you all the luck in the world with this if you are somebody who has the traits. Have a great week and see you next Monday. Bye.